Are you blessed by Ara and Jesus? Do you think shooting more rockets into the air is significantly more important than actually hitting anything with said rockets in the first place? Do you think making sense and being practical in a game where shooting a rocket launcher at your feet isn't a synonym for death like in real life is stupid? If you said yes to any of the following, I have the guide for you. How yin's doing? I'm an Ian, and this is my TF2 How to Kill Streak series, where we look at the best and worst TF2 has to offer, and I show you how to get a kill streak with it. Because everything is a bad idea until it works. Today, we'll be covering the Baker's Bazooka. So without further ado, let's get into it. And then he herded them onto a boat, and then he beat the crap out of every single one. The Baker's Bazooka was added back in 2012 in the Pyromania update as part of the Dumpster Diver item set, and can be crafted by combining three direct hits with a reclaimed metal. Like always, however, I recommend just trading or waiting for a random drop if you wish to acquire this weapon. As for what the Bazooka does, instead of having a clip size like a normal rocket launcher, you instead have to manually load up all your rockets and then fire them out in rapid succession. This can be useful at dealing with pyros since they can only airblast one of these rockets at a time, but you're firing three faster than they can airblast and spacing them out in such a way that they can't all be airblasted by the same pyro at once. This makes the Baker's Bazooka soldier's best primary weapon for dealing with enemy pyros. You should totally just use your shotguns instead of trying to shoot at them with a rocket launcher anyway, but still, nice to have options. Of course, the Baker's Bazooka does have some downsides. Most notably, if you try to load more than three rockets into your clip before launching them out at someone in short volleys, you'll actually end up having the fourth blow up and do harm to you instead of being added to the clip. This can, however, be beneficial to you at times, since it can be used to let you rocket jump mid-air. I myself am incapable of pulling this off consistently, but my associate the Dark Empire was willing to share some gameplay footage for me so I can show it off to you in this video. There will be a link to their YouTube channel in the description of this video if you're interested in them. What's even more problematic is that your rockets actually suffer from random bullet spread. This means aiming is just straight up impossible with the Baker's Bazooka because you genuinely have no way of knowing what direction your rockets are going to be going in before you shoot them beyond somewhere in front of you. Yes, I know the rockets technically come out of a 3 degree angle emanating from where the rockets are fired from your player model. However, realistically, unless you get a degree in quantum physics or are using some sort of bot program to assist in your aim, you're not going to have anything more than a vague approximation of where your rockets are going to go. This means the RNG aspect of the Baker's Bazooka is less like playing a card game where you can carefully count the cards and see what your mathematical odds are, and more akin to rolling dice where you have a vague idea of what's going on, but generally speaking you're just gonna get roll snake eyes whenever it's least convenient. There are two definitive downsides attached to this weapon, however, that I feel like I must mention before we go on to the general tactics and what weapons to use alongside the Baker's Bazooka. The first downside is that you have a 20% smaller blast radius on your rockets. Combine this with the fact that your rockets spread out in a random fashion, and you'll quickly realize that whenever you're not loading up multiple rockets in advance before firing, you'll be at a distinct disadvantage against enemy opposition. Still, a rocket launcher still does a rocket launcher's worth of damage, so realistically, if you don't have a shotgun and you need to kill someone outside of melee range, this weapon can still come in clutch, just less consistently than your other launchers. The second downside attached to this weapon I believe we must mention is the fact that payload carts and engineer dispensers will not grant you ammo whatsoever when you have this weapon pulled out. So if you wish to get ammo from dispensers or payload carts, you'll need to switch to your other weapons in order to restore your ammo pool. If that sounds like a bug, I'm pretty sure it is, but knowing Valve, it's not getting patched out anytime soon, so yeah, make use of it while you can. With the basics now covered, let's move on to the weapons and tactics you'll want to use with this weapon. When it comes to weapons to use alongside the Baker's Bazooka, in terms of melee, the meta is still the standard. Your call between the disciplinary action or escape plan, for if you wish to get into a situation or out of a situation faster. As for secondaries, that's where things get interesting. Obviously, the bison and man threads are some of the worst options you can pick, since they are, frankly, some of the worst secondary soldier can use whatsoever. Don't get me wrong, these weapons can be perfectly viable and usable in your casual pub setting, but realistically your other options just utterly eclipse them in terms of viability. In my humble opinion, there are three secondaries that stand out above all the others when using the Baker's Bazooka. The first is the gunboats, since the reduced self-harm they grant you make them perfect for those of you who wish to go for the otherwise impossible jumps you can do mid-air with the Baker's Bazooka. 
The conch is also an obvious choice for anyone who wants to go on a kill streak as soldier in this game, since that passive health regeneration it grants is just going to keep you alive longer, making this the perfect secondary for those of you who wish to be a discount artillery cannon and shoot volleys upon volleys of randomly deviating rockets at your opponents. Not the most fun or interesting way to get a kill streak in this game, but an effective one all the same. After all, if you got a few kills every now and then and never died in every round, well, that technically counts as a kill streak. However, the secondary I personally recommend for those of you who wish to go on a kill streak with the Baker's Bazooka are the shotguns, more specifically, the Panic Attack. This is because the shotguns are far more accurate and reliable to hit with in comparison to the Baker's Bazooka. This is because the shotguns, while they do suffer from random bullet spread similar to the Bazooka's rockets, are hit scan, meaning there's no travel time you need to account for. It's simply a matter of, is your cursor over the person you want dead? If so, at least one of those bullets is going to hit them. Now roll and see if you hit enough to actually kill them. This is why I recommend a panic attack in lieu of the other shotguns, since its bullet spread is fixed, meaning you don't need to worry about RNGs screwing you over. Instead, the panic attack simply sends its bullets flying in a fixed rectangle emanating from the crosshairs, making it a far more consistent and reliable shotgun to use when you're in a panic, especially with its 50% increased deploy speed, making this the perfect shotgun for when you need something to switch to when you're in a panic, hence the name. However, regardless of which shotgun you decide to use, they will be a consistently reliable tool to use to finish off those scouts or other light classes and low health targets that you need to finish off consistently before they can take cover. When using the Baker's Bazooka, there are multiple tactics to employ. Personally, I prefer using this weapon similar to the Heavy's minigun, where you end up trying to preemptively rev up before you want to start a fight, switching to your shotguns whenever that isn't an option. However, an interesting tactic I learned from the Dark Empire is you can use looping taunt animations to store your rockets inside the clip without needing to worry about self-harm as you reload a fourth rocket in over and over again. This means if you need to wait a few seconds, but don't want to blow yourself up with rockets, you can simply use the high five taunt or some other similar animation to simply sit there and wait until the perfect opportunity comes to shoot at someone with the beggars. I would call this a pay-to-win mechanic, but you can technically get the high five taunt through random drops, so it's technically not pay-to-win, but realistically it is by any meaningful metric. And if you don't believe that the high five taunt can be acquired from random drops, here's a picture of myself back when I was a gibbous noob on a versus Saxon Hill server using a high five taunt I got from a random drop. I no longer have the high five taunt since I sold it to a trader for marketable items which I then sold on the Steam market to afford new games on Steam through the summer sales, but still, interesting fact all the same. All in all, I give the Beggar's Bazooka an RNG out of 10. This is an unreliable weapon that requires RNG to swing in your favor in order to be effective, and whilst that can be fun, it's not what I would consider a practical weapon. Use this if you want to go for crazy or otherwise impossible plays, not if you're trying to win a game or go on a kill streak in any serious capacity. This is a weapon for those casuals who like to hang out on High Tower and Two Fort all day, not for tryhards like myself. That's all for now though, like the video if you did, subscribe if you don't want to miss the next video, comment what weapons you want to see me cover in the future. I've been an Ian, you have been you, and this has been my TF2 How to Kill Streak Guide to the Baker's Bazooka. And stay tuned, the Babyface's Blaster is coming up next.